So this brings us to the big issues in agriculture today. On top of the list is really food security. And uh, food security boils down to the balance of trade in food. Um, how much of food are we really importing? And uh, how much are we really producing? So we must have a good balance. Only then we can consider ourselves as being secure in terms of food. Then, of course, we have food safety. Food safety is also um, being highly emphasized today. Um, in the era where we are using a lot of chemicals and uh, conditioners uh, to produce our crops, we inevitably run into problems with overuse of chemicals. And uh, as a result, there's a lot of residue problems that are surfacing on food crops today, fresh produce and so on. So the way to go here is to establish product traceability mechanisms where you have systems today that enable you to trace the food uh, from its point of origin. So you are able to pinpoint and say which part of the field that this particular produce came from. And if you have um, uh, problems in that particular part of the field, you can actually go and mitigate those problems. But the bigger advantage of this system would be it creates consumer confidence. That means your product or your produce was uh, produced in a, in a very safe manner in the field and therefore the consumers would be um, um, confident to consume these particular products because it would be safe from contamination. So this is one uh, way to go. Of course, the next um, priority issue is really sustainable production. Today, all over the world, um, sustainable agriculture has become a policy speak. It's become a key point in many roundtable discussions. Uh, people are concerned about how sustainable is our crop production? Can it be sustainable for a long time? You know, uh, in, in agriculture, it's common that we have a, a good uh, crop this particular year, and the next year, the, the, the yields are not so good. So with a growing population, it's important for us to ensure that we have a good production that is happening over a long period of time. So one of the ways to promote sustainable production uh, of crops is really using uh, the concept of good agricultural practices. Uh, good agricultural practices culminates the fact that you have uh, to produce your, your crops in an advanced way. At the same time, you must care for the environment and you must also care for the ecology. You, know, you cannot disturb this balance. So there are a lot of uh, practices that have been formulated over the years. And there are different schemes of good agricultural practices in place today. Um, for example, in Malaysia, we, we have um, our own good agricultural practice schemes that are being implemented. And uh, so again, this particular approach creates consumer confidence. Um, and, and so your product or your uh, produce becomes much more marketable. Okay. Okay, next we have production efficiency. Of course, production efficiency is a long-standing problem. Um, a lot of our inputs have been applied in a very inefficient manner. And technologies like precision agriculture attempts to fix that. So this is a work in progress. And uh, especially with regards to fertilizers and pesticides, if you are applying your inputs in an efficient way, then a good chance is you're going to achieve your efficiency in product production. And even in terms of labor, a lot of systems today are moving away from human labor. You know, they are trying to make uh, agriculture more robotic. Okay? And this enables um, your production to be efficient. So, so this is a very key uh, pointer in, in today's agriculture. Then, of course, we have environmental protection. Uh, this is another um, classic example of how agriculture is, is changing. Uh, gone are the days when it's all right for you to 
pump in as much chemicals as you want into your farm uh, in the name of increasing productivity. But today, a lot of these kind of practices are being monitored and it is not okay for us to pollute the environment. We have to be careful about off-site chemical loading. A lot of the chemicals we use in agriculture, for example, fertilizers and pesticides, when they do not hit the target, for example, they do not um, hit the, the specific pest, for example, or the particular fertilizer is not taken up by the plant, then the question is, what happens to these chemicals? Where do they go? And so a lot of reports have shown in clarity that these chemicals are polluting the environment. They pollute our waterways, they pollute the air, and so on. So, so this is no longer acceptable. So a lot of um, practices in agriculture today try and um, address this issue by using superior technologies. Now, precision, for example, in precision agriculture, you apply your inputs based on what the crop needs. So this creates a situation where you reduce wastage of, say, fertilizer or, or other chemicals like pesticides. And, uh, and in this way, you prevent the chemical from going elsewhere into the environment. And you also promote soil quality. Okay? Then, of course, we have crop quality. This is also an issue today. Gone are the days when we produce crops based on quantity. Today, quality counts. Um, quantity also counts, but we want high quality uh, produce. We want a lot of them, so which means we need high quantity as well as quality. Um, and this is uh, quite classic because food is supposed to be nutritious. So this addresses that concern, you know, that food has to be nutritious and therefore the quality of the crop is of paramount importance. So again, high quality crops um, will have a higher market value and a lot of uh, farms today are putting emphasis on this. Then, of course, the, the next issue is really on biofuel production. As you know, we live in an energy crisis today. Um, it is important for us to have an alternative to fossil fuels. And the good thing is agriculture has got crops that have been shown to um, be efficient uh, feedstocks for biofuel. Of course, th this sounds good, but there's also that other issue of food versus fuel, which we also have to come to terms with. And, uh, and this is where the balance is important. For example, palm oil has been shown to be um, a biofuel uh, feedstock. It is also known that palm oil is a major cooking oil, uh, the one of the major um, processing that happens in, in, in crude palm oil is turning it into cooking oil for food preparation. So it's safe to say that palm oil is actually a food-related food, uh, crop. So how do we then balance the need to produce oil palm for the purpose of fuel? And how do we then balance the need to produce it for food? So this becomes a very important discussion. And I think it's also a work in progress here. And uh, a lot of this... Um, uh, issues will slowly get ironed out, I believe. But agriculture is, this is a classic example of how agriculture is moving towards non-food application. Okay? Of course, the, the next big issue is really water and air pollution. Um, we, we accept that today the environment is unable to take our insults anymore. Uh, we, we cannot go on insulting our environment, cannot go on polluting our environment like the way we have been doing. Um, of course, there is an urgent need for green technologies. And uh, the one way for us to, to appreciate this um, whole idea of not polluting the environment is we have to accept that the environment is borderless. So when you insult the environment in one region, it is 
going to affect another region which could be thousands of miles away eventually. So it's safe to say that if, if you continue to pollute the environment, the environment is going to bite you soon. You know? so, so it's no longer OK for us to contaminate the environment. And of course, this includes um, uh, issues on air quality as well as water quality, because water especially is a very important resource in uh, contemporary agriculture.